السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته. إن الحمد لله نحمد ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا نحمد الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا عادي له فأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمد عبده ورسوله. Ramadan 14:35. The Nation of Islam conduct the Ramadan prayer line. Many of the Muslims participate in that prayer line with them. Now, and this no doubt, Yaqwan is from the major mistakes. As Sheikh Muhammad Salih Muslimin, they asked him, is it permissible to go and listen to an innovator who is just going to give a speech that contains a warning, speaking about the hellfire and the grave and the likes. And Sheikh Uthameen, he says, this is not permissible. He said, but rather suffice yourself for those people from Ahlul Sunnah wa Jama'ah. He said, because one of the dangers, if, if you go to listen to an innovator speak, then the people will be misled by you going to listen to them speak, and they will believe that the innovator is okay. So if it's not permissible for the common person to go and attend the lecture of an innovator who's going to speak about the paradox of the hellfire, then how can it be okay for a da'i to go and sit beside and share the same panel with the kuffar? Nam, <coughs> and what made this worse, Yaqwan, is when Siraj wa Hajj, Hadani Allah wa Iyahu, may Allah guide me and guide him, when he said, I love Louis Farrakhan. And this is something which I heard with my own ears. And what made it worse than that is when Siraj wa Hajj, Hadani Allah wa iyahu, may Allah guide me and guide him, participated in a fundraiser with Louis Farrakhan as the main speaker. And one of the things that he said, I would like to keep talking, but I want to hurry up and sit down so Minister Farrakhan can come on and speak. <clears throat> and when you mention these things, Ya'akwana to the brothers, they always have the same response. Well, they're giving them da'wah. Naam, <coughs> and they use the statement what Allah Ta'ala said in Surah Taha, verses 43 and 44. And go, both of you, Musa and Harun to Fir'aun. Verily, he has gone beyond our, our bounds. And say to him a word that is soft, soft and easy. Perhaps he may remember or have fear of Allah. <clears throat> and they try to use this proof, and they say, well, the brothers were just given da'wah. And we say, Ya'quan al-Khawat, this is a misunderstanding of the verse. Because we ask you, Ya'quan, did Musa and Harun, and do you know who Musa, alayhi salam, was? He is from Uru Azam. He is from the five greatest prophets that Allah Ta'ala ever sent. <coughs> Now, did he fulfill the command of Allah Ta'ala and his brother Harun? When Allah Ta'ala told them to go to Fir'aun and say to him a word that was soft, I ask you a question. Did Musa and Harun, alayhi salam, did, did they fulfill the command of Allah Azza wa Now, so now let's see what they said to him. And this will define what is soft. Because soft, Yaqwan, or a nice word, layin, is not defined by the intellect, right? It doesn't mean that you sit beside a disbeliever and you allow him to say his disbelief without disapproval of him. Imam al-Sa'di, 
He said that this ayat is explained by another verse. Meaning that Allah Ta'ala explained what was this soft word that they said to him. They said, Allah Ta'ala says, فَقُلْ هَلْ لَكَ إِلَىٰ أَن تَزَكَّ وَأَهْدِيَكَ إِلَىٰ رَبِّكَ فَتَخْشَ And say, <coughs> will you not purify yourself <coughs> and be guided to your Lord so that you will have fear of him? And remember, Sa'adi said, they presented this question to him because... <coughs> The question is an easy form of giving someone doubt. And they didn't say, I'm going to purify you. But they said, will you not purify yourself, putting it on him, not coming in at him from a, a high angle of arrogance. Now, and they said, so you will be guided to your Lord and have fear of him. And they said, because no man is going to, you know, disagree with being guided and having fear of their Lord. So this is the definition of them giving him the soft word is in the presentation, is not in the actual material. Is you give the person a soft presentation, but you don't change the actual message. Now, <clears throat> and we know that Musa alayhi salam al-Khwan, he called for Aum to at tawheed Details of it, to the extent that he even told for Aum that Allah Ta'ala was above the throne. Now, do you think that the nation of Islam are in need of knowing where Allah Ta'ala is? Musa alayhi salam, and listen to what Fir'aun said to Haman. He said, Ibn li sarhan la'alli ablaghu al-asbab. He said, build me a tower so maybe I can reach the means, the means of the heavens and earth so that I may look upon the God of Musa. But look at what he said next. Shaykh Abdul Aziz al-Rajahi. He said, and then he said, wa inni but verily, I think that he was lying. Who do you think was lying? About what? About when Musa told him that Allah Ta'ala was above the creation. He said, this is proof that Musa alayhi salam told him that Allah Ta'ala is above the heaven because Fir'aun said, well, I think he's lying. Meaning, I think he's lying about what he told him. Now, also, <coughs> Allah Ta'ala narrates a conversation in Surah Baqarah about the conversation that they had. He said that, Afwan, this is not Surah Baqarah, that's coming later. He said that, Brown said, and who is your Lord? Who is the Lord of you two, O Musa? He said, my Lord is the one who gives everything its creation and then he guides it. And then Brown said, for my bala. So what do you say about the previous nations? And he said, the Lord of that, the knowledge of that is with my Lord in a book. He does not lose anything, nor does he forget. He's calling, he's giving him da'wah about what? Allah Ta'ala's names and attributes, right? He does not, <clears throat> and you're going to find why this is significant. He does not misplace anything, nor does he forget. <clears throat> he said, the one who has made the earth as a bed for you. And place all the means for you, and sent down from the sky water, and brought up from it is vegetation in Paris. Now, <coughs> so Yaquan, when it comes to Islam, then we know that in order for a person to enter into Islam, as Allah Ta'ala says in Surah Baqarah, verse number 208, Ya simmi kafah, or you who believe enter into Islam wholeheartedly, and entering into Islam completely, it means that you have to believe in the six pillars of Iman, right? Which are what? Belief in Allah Ta'ala. Help me out. Belief in the angels. Belief in the books. Belief in the messengers. Belief in the day of judgment. And belief in the divine decree, the good of it and the bad of it. Now, and you have to implement the five pillars of Islam. And all of this has to be in accordance with the Quran and the Sunnah on the understanding of the Salaf al And this is because Allah Ta'ala is the most knowledgeable about Himself. So no one can come and tell Allah Ta'ala who He is or about His names and attributes because He is most knowledgeable about Himself and about everything else. As Allah Ta'ala says, قُلْ أَتُعَلِّمُونَ اللَّهَ بِدِينَكُمْ وَاللَّهُ يَعْلَمُ مَا فِي السَّمَاوَاتِ وَمَا فِي الْأَرْضِ وَاللَّهُ بِكُلِّ شَيْءٍ عَلِيمٌ Surah 49, 16. Say, will you teach Allah about your religion? 
while Allah knows everything that is in the heavens and the earth, and Allah has encompassed everything with knowledge. Therefore, because Allah Ta'ala is the most knowledgeable, then the primary source for every Muslim is what? It's a question. The primary source for every Muslim is what? Is the Quran, the speech of Allah Ta'ala. As he said, And follow that which has been sent down to you from your Lord, and do not follow other than you. Friends and protectors, little do you remember. Chapter number 7, verse number 3. And then after that, Yaqwan, the, the messenger of Allah, is the most knowledgeable of the creation concerning Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because the Quran was revealed to him. And he is the best example for the Muslim to follow. So every Muslim who wants to be upon guidance, and who wants to be honorable in the real sense, then he must follow the example of the Messenger of Allah, sallallahu alayhi As Allah Ta'ala says, وَأَنزَلْنَا إِلَيْكَ ذِكْرِ لِتُبَيِّنَا لِلنَّاسِ مَا نُزِلَ إِلَيْهِمْ And verily we have sent down to you, O Muhammad, the reminder, so that you may clarify to the people that which was revealed to them. Chapter 16, verse number 44. <coughs> And the Messenger of Allah, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Muhammad ibn Abdullah, he was sent to all mankind. As Allah Ta'ala says, وَمَا أَرْسَلْنَاكَ إِلَّا كَافَةً لِلنَّاسِ And we have not sent you, O Muhammad, except to suffice all mankind. بَشِرًا وَنَذِيرًا As a bringer of glad tidings and a warner. وَلَكِنَّ أَكْثَرَ النَّاسِ لَا يَعْلَمُونَ But most people know not. Chapter 34, verse 28. And the Messenger of Allah, he said in Sahih Muslim, Hadith number 523, he said, I have been sent to all mankind, and the line of the prophets is closed with me. Naam, so his message, Al-Quran, is universal for all mankind. And then after that, who should we follow? Those people who Allah Ta'ala specifically chose to surround him and to bring the message to us, the Sahaba. As Allah Ta'ala says in chapter number 9, verse number 100, وَالسَّابِقُونَ الْأَوَّلُونَ مِنَ الْمُهَاجِرِينَ وَالْأَنْسَارِ وَالَّذِينَ تَبِعُوهُمْ بِإِحْسَانِ رَضِيَ اللَّهُ عَنْهُمْ وَرَضُوا عَنْهُ And those first and foremost to migrate for the Muhajirun and the Ansar, Allah is pleased, and those who follow them in goodness, Allah is pleased with them and they are pleased with Him. Naam? And Allah Ta'ala, He says, فَإِنْ آمَنُوا بِمِثْلِ مَا أَمَنْتُمْ فَقَدْ اِحْتَدَوْا And if they believe like you all believe, who is the you in this verse? The Messenger of Allah Islam and the Sahaba. If they believe like you all believe, then they are rightly got it. Chapter number 2, verse 137. Now, he says, so everyone who claims to be a Muslim, he has to weigh his belief system against the Quran and the Sunnah and the understanding of the Salaf al Now, <clears throat> and then after that, Ya Khwan, we have to refer the affairs back to the ulama, as Allah Ta'ala says, فَاسْأَلُوا أَحْلَ ذِكْرِ إِن كُنْتُمْ لَتَعْلَمُونَ Ask the people of knowledge if you do not know. Some people, Ya Khwan, they claim to be Muslim, while they still have their pagan beliefs. And it's not sufficient for a person to, to believe in Islam except if he disbelieves in everything that opposes Islam. As Allah Ta'ala says, فَمَنْ يُكْفِرْ بِالطَّاغُوتِ وَيُؤْمِنْ بِاللَّهِ And whoever disbelieves in the false deities and believes in Allah, then surely he has grasped the most trustworthy handhold that shall never break. Surah number 2, 256. Shaykh Abdul Aziz bin Baz, he said, and explained this verse, he said, this means that a person must free himself from the worship of other than Allah. And he must believe that to worship other than Allah is invalid and unacceptable. And the meaning of the Ta'abud is everything that is worshipped besides Allah Ta'ala. He said, thus the person must free himself from worshipping anything except for Allah Ta'ala. And whoever does not believe that to worship other than Allah Ta'ala is invalid, then he is a disbeliever. Now, <clears throat> He says, and this includes those people who worship other than Allah Ta'ala or those people who claim divinity for themselves. He says a person has to disassociate himself from all of that. So we say, Yaquan, that the nation of Islam, and we're going to refer to them as the nation, they claim that they are Muslim. But as the Salaf said, if a person was, if a claim could benefit someone without there being some factual evidence behind it, then the Pharaoh would have been truthful in his claim. When he said, Verily I only show you that which I see, and I only guide you to the right path. Pharaoh said this, but of course he was lying. 
So now we're going to get to the beliefs of Islam and the beliefs of the nation of Islam. And Allah, Ya Akhwan Akhawat, we're not trying to, you know, mock these people, but we're going to say exactly what they said. If they're not ashamed to say it, then we're going to say exactly what they said. Okay? As for the Muslim, then our faith begins with what? Belief in Allah Ta'ala. And so we believe that Allah Ta'ala is not a man. He's not a spirit. He's not an angel. He does not have a father. He does not have a mother. He does not have a wife. He does not have children. He was not born. He does not have offspring. And there is nothing similar to him whatsoever. And he has perfect names and attributes. And he is free from any imperfection at all. And he is above his throne. And he is above all the creation in a manner that befits his majesty. Allah Ta'ala says, Qul huwa Allahu ahad, Allahu samad, lam yalit wa lam yulit wa lam yakul lahu kufuwan ahad. Say Allah is the one. Allah is a summit, meaning the one. Summit means, as Shaykh Uthameen explains, the one who doesn't need anything but everything needs him. He was not born and he did not have offspring. And there is nothing similar, similar to him whatsoever. Allah Ta'ala he said about himself in chapter number 6, 101, بَدِيرُ السَّمَاوَاتِ وَالْأَرْضِ أَلَّا يَكُنْ لَهُ وَلِدْ وَلَمْ تَكُنْ لَهُ صَاحِبًا He says he is the creator of the heavens and earth. How can he have a son when he has no companion? Now, and he created everything. And he is knowledgeable about everything. And he said, مَا تَقَذَ اللَّهُ مِنْ وَلِدْ Allah did not take a son. And there is no deity with him. If there would have been, then the other deity would have Take him what he created. <clears throat> That's chapter number 2391. And he said, He is the creator of the heavens and earth. <clears throat> and he made for you spouses from your own selves. And he made for the cattle spouses also. <clears throat> now, he said, And there is nothing similar to him whatsoever. Allah Ta'ala Yaqwan is above his creation. As he said, Wa huwa qahiru fuqul ibadi. And he is the dominator above his slaves. Now, so this is what we believe. That Allah Ta'ala is not similar to anything at all. Doesn't have a mother, doesn't have a father, any offspring, any siblings. The nation of Islam, what do they believe concerning Allah Ta'ala? They believe that Allah Ta'ala is a man. They believe Allah Ta'ala had a father. They believe Allah Ta'ala had a mother. They believe Allah Ta'ala has siblings and offspring. And they believe that Allah Ta'ala lives upon the earth. Elijah, um, Elijah Muhammad, he said, and I'm going to quote him. He said, we are going to get over to you the history of this man who is the almighty God in person as he gave it to me. He says to me, beginning his history, that I want you to listen carefully. That his father was a black man, very much so. And his mother was a white woman. He said that his father knew that he could not be successful in coming to a solid white country and being a solid black man. So he said to me, or rather he told me that his father said, this is the father of who? This is the father of a man they call God. This is the father of Father Muhammad. He said, he, he, he said, his father said, I will go and make me a son and I will send my son looking like them. So Almighty God in the person of Master Father Muhammad said to me, I will have to make one look like them. So he said his father went up into the hills. And there he found him a wife. A white wife. And he taken her and made a good Muslim out of her. We have from him, he says to me, that his father married this woman. And the first child she birthed for him was a girl. And he said, his father said, mm, I missed that time. <laughs> So he said he made another try, and that was him. This is the Savior, Savior's Day lecture from 1973. So they're saying that in this Yaquan, they say, they're saying that La Ta'ala had what? A father. When they say his name was Alfonso. A mother. They say her name was Baby G. And they're saying he had a big sister. SubhanAllah. And La Ta'ala is free from this evil. You made a mistake. <coughs> Nay, now, nah. and he made him ahsan, and he made a mistake. Elijah Muhammad goes on to say, The whole world has been and is looking for the coming of God. 
Several places in both the Bible and the Holy Quran refer to the coming of Allah, God, the coming of the Son of Man. <coughs> Referring to God as the Son of Man should remove all doubt as to him being anything other than a man. This is in his, from the message to the black man, 1965. And then Louis Farrakhan, he says, and I heard him say this, and he said it, he said, I was just interviewed by some of our Arab Muslim brothers, and they were questioning us about the difference between us and the world of Islam. He said, and people say, you are not real Muslims, so what are the differences? I said, and Louis Farrakhan is saying, he told the Earl of this. He said, I said, we believe that Allah came to us in the person of Master Father Muhammad. And you say this is not Islam. This is terrible. How can you say such a thing? God coming in the form of a man? And, and, and then Louis Farrakhan, and he's making the accent while he's saying this. And then he goes on to say, I didn't say this part, but I tell you what I did say, and then I tell you what I didn't say. I said, no, either you are wrong, or we have an understanding that you need to come to. This is in, in, in his lecture, The True Mission of Elijah Muhammad. And Yaquan, in case anyone is thinking that some people try to say that they don't have that belief anymore, unless they change it today, because I went on the website yesterday, they still have at point number 12, we believe that Allah, God, appeared in the person of Master W. Farah Muhammad, July 1930, the long-awaited Messiah of the Christians and the Mahdi of the Muslims. Now this is on their publication, The Final Call, and on their website. Now, let's take a minute to see what really happened. How did this man come about? <coughs> you know, there's a man named Timothy Drew. He's actually from North Carolina. <laughs> He's from North Carolina. He was born in the late 1800s. And in his biography, and of course this man would change his name to what? Noble Drew Ali. He was born 1886. He was, keep these dates in mind, he was born 1886. He went to Egypt and he said that he met a high priest of magic in Egypt who told him that he was the reincarnation of Asa ibn Omega. Now, and so he came back, and, and this same man gave him a copy of what he called the lost, the lost books of the Quran. Now, and he gave this book to this man who called himself Noble Drew Ali, and he came back to America and formed the Moorish Science Temple. Okay? Now, in this book, he claims that Isa ibn Amayim, well, they, this is Drew Ali. He said that they were trying to cure Isa ibn Amayim, that he escaped to India and began to give dawah to the Buddhists and the Hindus. And he believes that all of the religions are correct. Now, now if you notice, Yaquan, what group teaches that when they tried to cure Isa, he went to India and they never cured him? Who teaches that? Who knows? Ahmadiyya. It's all connected. Ahmadiyya. It's all connected. As Ghulam Ahmed came a little bit before Drew Ali. And so they used to teach that Isa al Islam did not rise to the heavens, but rather he moved to India and just lived a normal life and he just died. And so Ghulam Ahmed was the final prophet and messenger. So it's all connected. Now, so, now, Drew Ali died in 1929 from tuberculosis at the age of 43. When he died, there was a member of the group named David Ford L. Who saw the opportunity to start his own group and called himself what? Master Father Muhammad. And he started his own group, which would become the Nation of Islam. Now, so this is their real history. And, and... As he was told, and he began to tell the people that he was a reincarnation of Drew Ali. So it started him saying that he was a reincarnation of Drew Ali, and then he eventually began to tell the people that he was Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. <clears throat> and just for a little extra benefit, Clarence 13X was from Baltimore. 
He, um, <laughs> he, he was a, he broke off from the Nation of Islam and started what group? The 5%. Five percent. Five percent. Okay. Now, back to their beliefs. Now, as for what the Muslim believe, and may Allah preserve us upon this belief, we believe that Allah Ta'ala is one and he does not die. Now, as, as Allah Ta'ala says, Wa ilahukum ilahum rahim. La ilaha illahu ar rahman rahim. And your Lord is one deity. There is no deity worship but him, the most merciful, ar rahman ar rahim. Chapter number 2, verse 163. Now, and of course we all know, Ayat al so Allah Ta'ala says, Allah, there is no deity worthy of worship but Him. Al Hayyu Al Qayyum, the, the ever living. Al Qayyum, the one who, because of Him, everything else exists. He does not. He is not taken by a a sinat or gnome. He's not taken by drowsiness or sleep. Nam. Allah Taala says in chapter twenty-five, verse fifty-eight, "What the what kill Al Hayy Al Ladi La Yamut, and rely upon the ever living, the one who does not die." So we believe what? That Allah Ta'ala is one and he never dies. Why? Because who created death? Allah Ta'ala created death. Death is a creation. Something that he created will never overtake him. Now, as for the nation of Islam, they believe that there are many gods and they die and they are replaced by other gods. Elijah Muhammad, he said, He said, I quote, first, we are all Allah, but Master W.D. Fahd Muhammad is supreme over all of us and is referred at times as the supreme being. He is supreme over all other beings because his wisdom, knowledge, understanding, and power to destroy and reproduce and create another universe or to make a people makes him greater than all and wiser than those before him, even he who created the universe. Because the one who was able to reproduce or destroy or bring one better. Now, because this one, meaning this God, is able to reproduce or destroy or bring one better. So says the Holy Quran. This is in a question and answer by Elijah Muhammad that, was, um, that he did on August the 21st, 1947. So he said what? And we're going to, what does he mean by he is greater than those before him? I mean, he is greater than the gods before him. And Elijah Muhammad said, Allah in the person of Master Father Muhammad, to whom all praises are due forever, taught me that there are not any gods who live forever. Their wisdom and work may live for 6,000 or 25,000 years, but the actual individual may have died within 100 or 200 years. Or the longest that we have a record of around a thousand years. The longest that any god has lived is for a thousand years. There is no god living who was here when the creation of the universe. He said, there is no God that's alive that was here when the universe was created. But they produce gods from them and their wisdom lives in us. This is in his lecture entitled, Our Savior Has Arrived, Chapter 19. We believe, the Muslims, that Allah Ta'ala has no beginning and no end. And he is the creator and he is not created. As Allah Ta'ala says, and he is the first and he is the last. And he is the Wahid and the Vahid. And he is, his knowledge encompasses everything. Chapter number 15, um, chapter number 57, verse number 3. So we believe Allah Ta'ala what? Has no beginning and no end and he was not created. The nation of Islam believe that Allah was created and he has a beginning. Elijah Muhammad said, <clears throat> Allah was created, self-created from an atom of life. The atom of life was not only able to create flesh and have blood from the earth that he was created on. Allah, God, was created on the very earth that we are today. He said, Allah, God, was created on the very earth that we are today. But the earth was not as it is today. This is in his lecture, Our Savior Has Arrived, 1974, page 146. We believe that Allah Ta'ala is the only creator of the universe and that now, nah, man, everything in the universe, to include the solar system 
animals, plants, and all races. Naam, as Allah Ta'ala says, Allah khaliqu kulli shay, wa huwa bi kulli, wa huwa ala kulli shayin wakil. Allah is the creator of everything. And he is over everything a trustee. Chapter number 39, 62. Naam, and he said, Ya ayyuhal ladhina amanu, ya ayyuhal nas, inna khalaqanakum min dhakrin wa unfa, wa ja'alnakum shu'uban wa qaba'il. O mankind, really we have created you from male and female. We have made you into nations and tribes. لِتَعَارَفُوا To get to know one another. Chapter number 49, 13. The nation of Islam believe that there are other creators besides Allah Ta'ala. If I ask any young kid in here, who created the mountains, what are they going to say? Allah. Somebody give me a verse. Alam Najal, go ahead. Nah, Allah created the heavens and the earth, somebody else. Wal Jibala O Tana. Right? Have we not made the earth for you a bed and made the mountains at pegs? The nation of Islam, they believe that the mountains were created from the mother wheel or the mothership. That when they dropped bombs on the earth from the mothership, the bombs went down on the earth and they went down so low that they brought up mountains when they came when they exploded. So they believe that the mountains were created from the mothership, where they believe Elijah Muhammad now resides. They believe that Yaqub, who was, they say, the big-headed white scientist, created the white man. <laughs> Minister Louis Farrakhan, he delivered a lecture series calling, entitled, Who Are the Real Children of Israel? And he said, when they make mockery of what God has revealed to the honorable Elijah Muhammad, they say that Yaqub was an evil scientist. Wrong. Yaqub was a scientist who saw in the genetic makeup of the black man that he could bring out of us a new people, the opposite of the original. That's not evil, that's high science. So he believed that the white man was created by who? Yaqub. And they said, Elijah Muhammad taught that the white man first appeared 6,000 years ago on the island of Pilan. Now, he said where they went through a 600 year process of breeding and grafting the white man from the black man. Now, so, now this is um, entitled by a, a book by Elijah Muhammad called Yaqub, the Father of Mankind. Now, the Muslims believe that Allah Ta'ala alone controls the affairs of the universe. Allah Ta'ala says, Say who provides for you from the heavens and the earth, and who controls the hearing and the sight, and who brings out the living from the dead, and brings out the dead from the living, and who nah, and who controls the affairs. And they will surely say Allah. Who will say this? The pagans of Mecca will say that Allah Ta'ala is the creator. They knew this. Nah, the nation of Islam believe that the universe is controlled by, by 12 black scientists. Elijah Muhammad said, who was Allah before Master W.D. before Muhammad was born? This even the question is a foolish question. Who was Allah before Master W.D. before Muhammad was born? He said, who was Allah when Jesus was born? He said, now there are 12 imams or scientists who have been ruling all the time. And one of the 12 is always greater than the other 11. But the God of this world before the birth of Jesus and up until 1877 was Yaqub. The God of this world up until 1877 was Yaqub. This means that the God of this world, Yaqub, although he lived only for 152 years, has ruled for the last 6,000 years. Not sure how that works. <laughs> he said, therefore, he was in power when Jesus was born. And this is why Jesus was not able to set up his kingdom. Because the wicked God, the, the time of the wicked God was not up yet. He said, a people who have been taught that the supreme being is other than a being, something spooky like, is not easy for them to see out of the dark ignorance teaching the reality. Because they believe that if you believe that Allah Ta'ala is unseen and the creator of the universe, that you believe something spooky. This is spooky. And that's just the facts of it. Now, as, and their belief is like the, the pagans of old and rather it's like what the Jews said to Musa. When they said, as Allah Ta'ala said, they said, oh Musa, we will not believe in you until we see Allah. We see Allah in, like in front of us. Now, 
And as a, as a repetition of this right here comes the famous hadith or the next hadith from Abu Musa al -Ashari. He said that the Prophet, he said that they were with the Prophet Muhammad al -Islam, and he was teaching them something from, from the affairs of the religion. And he, and, and he said, and our eyes began to get very tired and weary. And he said to them, what's making your eyes so tired? And they said, we are looking at the moon. And he said, so how is it going to be when you see your Lord? You look at the moon and your eyes get tired. Go out there and look at the sun and try to drive home. You can't look at the sun. And they even said, if you look at the sun when there's an eclipse, you do what? You're going to go blind. But they expect to see Allah Ta'ala. Now, as a Muslim, they say, the reason that you can't see Allah Ta'ala, and from them is Imam al -Nawi. He said, the reason that you can't see Allah Ta'ala in this life is because you can't take it. You're not physically able to take looking at Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. Now, from the next belief, Yaqwan. So this is the belief in Allah Ta'ala. They are completely astray. Next is belief in the angels. We believe that the angels are from the world of the unseen. That were created from light. Now, and they have no share in lordship or worship at all. As comes in the hadith of Aisha, that the Messenger of Allah said, the angels were created from light, and the jinn were created from smoke and fire, and you were created from that which has been described to you. The nation of Islam, do you know what they believe about the angels? They believe that the angels are the pilots on the mothership. They believe that the angels are the pilots on the mothership. And they say the will has been above the earth since 1929. And they believe that the angels are human beings. Now, <clears throat> as comes from Mas Muhammad, number six in Baltimore, Maryland, he said that the angels are described in the scriptures cannot be made to anything other than human beings because of popular, uh, of popular, uh, um, popular literature over the past several decades or centuries, the angels have been made into spirits or supernatural beings, little spirits that sit on the shoulder, winged spirits that float around, all sorts of things other than the truth. People's imagination have run wild over the topics of angels, so they believe the angels are humans. As for the belief in the books. We believe that the Quran is the uncreated speech of Allah Ta'ala and the final revelation sent to mankind. And the Quran, it abrogates all the previous books and is superior over that. As Allah Ta'ala says in chapter number 1788, and say, if mankind and jinn were to gather together to bring something like this Quran <clears throat> or to come with something similar with it, they, they would never be able to do it, even if they help one another. And he said, and we have sent down the book in all truth. It is superior, being superior over the other books. Chapter number 5, verse 48. The Nation of Islam, they believe that the Quran is not the speech of Allah Ta'ala. They believe the Quran was written by black scientists. And it is not the final revelation. They believe there is a book greater than the Quran that shall follow it. Louis Farrakhan said, The Bible stops at the destruction of the power of this world. The Holy Quran does the same. The Holy Quran does not admit you until the year after. The Holy Quran and the Bible say, I have not seen, ear has not heard, nor has it entered into the heart of man to conceive what lies beyond this world. That means that another book has to come that completes the next 10,000 years. And this is the history of the 25,000 year cycle. This is in his lecture, Bible and the Quran. History is written in advance. Elijah Muhammad said, the date is taken from the beginning of the present cycle and the world of histories by 24 black scientists, of which only 23 actually do the writing. And the 24th one is a judge, and he judges the writings. And this takes place every 25,000 years. And this is in his lecture, Our Savior Has Arrived. As for belief in the messengers, then we know that the Prophet Muhammad ibn Abdullah, born in the year 570 A.D., is the final messenger. As Allah Ta'ala says, and Muhammad is not the father of any of you men, but rather he is the messenger of Allah and the seal of the prophets. Chapter 33, verse 40. And he said, I am the seal of the prophets. There is no prophet after me. As for the nation of Islam, we know what they believe, right? Who's the final prophet? Elijah Muhammad. Louis Farrakhan said, give me his own tafsir, chapter number 32. He said, and he mentioned the verse, I am Allah. He said, I, Allah, am the best knower. 
the revelation of the book, there is no doubt in it. It is from the Lord of the worlds. Or do they say he has forged it? Nay, it is the truth from the Lord, that thou mayest warn a people to whom no one has come before thee, that they may walk aright. Louis Farrakhan said, that cannot be talking about Prophet Muhammad and the Arabs. This is the lecture, the true mission of Elijah Muhammad. As for divine decree, and we'll just mention some of this briefly, because the issue of the of divine decree, we know has four different matters, but for brevity, I'm going to go through all of them in detail. But the belief in divine decree, as explained by Shekhar Thimi, it means that Allah Ta'ala knows all things in general and in detail, from the beginning to the end, Nam, whether it's concerning his actions or the actions of the slave. The second belief in divine decree is that Everything that's going to happen is written in the book of decrees, right? The third thing is that whatever happens only happens by the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the fourth thing is that Allah ta'ala has created everything. As for the nation of Islam, what do they believe about the divine decree? They believe that, and we don't even have to say black anymore, we just say scientists, you know they have to be black the nation of Islam, but they say that the black scientists, they write history 25,000 years in advance. They say that the black scientists, they write the history out. Louis Farrakhan said, the Honorable Elijah Muhammad said, there are 24 of our scientists, black men, that the Holy Quran calls the exalted assembly. One of these scientists acts as a judge or God for the others. And 23 actually do the work of writing the future of the nation. And all this is put into one book. It is called the mother of the books. It is a history written in advance to last for 25,000 years. This is in his lecture, Bible, and the Quran, history is written in advance. As for belief in, in the Day of Judgment, we believe that there shall be a physical resurrection, and we believe in paradise and the hellfire, right? As Allah Ta'ala says, the, believe, the disbelievers pretend that they will not be resurrected. Say, yes, by your Lord, you will surely be resurrected, and then you shall be informed of what you used to do. Chapter 64, verse number 7. So we believe that there is definitely a resurrection, right? No. And it's going to be physical. Allah Ta'ala is going to resurrect us, flesh and bone, uncircumcised, naked, to stand for everything that we have done. The nation of Islam, do they believe in the physical resurrection? No. Nah, they deny the physical resurrection. And they, and they deny the existence of paradise and hellfire. Louis Farrakhan said, the resurrection of the dead is not talking about people in, in physical cemeteries. The enemy has deceived you and made you put your hope in the heaven and the sky while he works you to death, building a heaven for himself on this earth. Well, what is meant by the resurrection of the dead? The, the Holy Quran says, the eyes have not, um, they have eyes, but they can't see. They have ears, but they can hear. They have a tongue, but they can't speak. They are blind, deaf, and dumb. The Bible says the same thing. When you have eyes, but you cannot see, when you have ears but you cannot hear, when you have a tongue but you cannot speak, you are considered mentally and spiritually dead and in need of resurrection. Therefore, the resurrection means to rise up again. Your people were once masters of earth. And he also said, it's final day. we wonder how can Siraj or Hajj, Ya Siraj, how can you say you love this man? He said, Louis Farrakhan said, now those of you looking for a devil up under the ground, you can forget that. And Reverend, don't teach that no more. There is no power in the earth to hurt you. <laughs> there is no fire down there. And, and, and then he begins imitating the preacher. This is what I heard with my own ears. He said, now there's a fire down there, and God's going to send you down, and you're going to burn eternally. There's a fire down there higher than the sun. He said, why don't you stop lying? And this, then he uses opera, right? He says the earth, and this math is not correct, but he says the earth is 7,926 miles in diameter. He said, and the center of the earth is one half of the radius of the circle. And half of that is, this math is not correct, 3,863. He said, so the earth is 93 million miles away. And we still feel heat from 93 million miles. And so you tell me, so the hell, because he believes the hell is in the center of the earth, is only 3,863 miles away from us. He said, we should never have a fuel bill. He said, we don't need oil or gas. The heat from hell would generate enough heat to warm our house. He said, this is ignorant teaching. He said, hell is not a place. Hell is a condition. 
Heaven is not a place, it's a condition. This is in his lecture. Heaven and hell, two conditions of life. And it's still written on the paper final call, number five, they say, we believe in the resurrection of the dead, not the physical resurrection, but the, the mental resurrection. And, of course, these matters are most important. And lastly, we can get to the other issue of the racism. Now, and we'll close with this right here. As we know that the Muslim, we don't have any preference to the black or the white as the message of Allah. He said that you will surely, he said that a people will surely stop bragging about their forefathers, those that have died and are only cold for the hellfire, or they shall be more insignificant to Allah than the dung beetle that moves, that, you know, the dung beetle that moves the dung with his nose. He said, Verily Allah has removed from you the slogan of Jahiliyyah. There is only a pious believer or a miserable um, fat, um, sinner. And the people are all from Adam, and Adam is from what? From dust. He's from dirt. Nah. And of course we know that Allah Ta'ala, he mentioned, we missed the birth already. O oh, mankind, verily, we, we have created you for male and female, and made you into tribes and nations to get to know one another. Verily, the best of you, or the most noble of you in the sight of Allah, are those who have the most tuffle. And verily, Allah is the all-knowing, <coughs> all-aware. Now, and the Prophet Muhammad, salam, he said that verily, there is no preference. He said, O oh, mankind, verily, your Lord is one, and your Father is one, and there is no virtue for the Adam over the non Adam. Or for the non Arab over the Arab, nor for the red over the black, or for the black over the red, except by taqwa. Then he said, Have you understood? And Sheikh Abani Yaqwani, he mentions, he said, The person who makes fun of a person's race is making fun of Allah. Of Allah Ta'ala, the one that created him. Now, as for Louis Farrakhan, he said, God said the white race is a race of devils. I didn't say it, I just believe it, because of the actions and the history. So Yaquan, after, and there are, Allah Yaquan, for the sake of time, you know, we don't want to go, but there, you can go on and on and on, to the fact that they don't have anything similar to the Muslims whatsoever. Nothing at all. So, after this Yaquan, is it possible that anyone can believe that these people are Muslims? Now, nah. and so we say to the people of the nation of Islam, we don't, we're not trying to mock them, but we say that for their own benefit, that they should not go to bed tonight believing they're Muslims. They need to leave that belief, and first they need to disbelieve in Elijah Muhammad, in Master Father Muhammad, as they call him, and Louis Farrakhan. They need to enter into Islam completely. Now, as the Messenger of Allah, Salawat Allah when he mentioned about those Christians who, who took their priests and monks as Lord besides Allah Ta'ala, as we mentioned earlier, he said what? Because they took what they made permissible, and they made it permissible. Those people do that with prayer. Whatever Louis Farrakhan says, it's the law for them. And they don't even read the Quran for themselves. Now, nah. And we say to our brothers who made the mistake of sitting on the Ramadan prayer line that don't get excited because the nation, because the nation fasts Ramadan. And people say, I heard the nation is praying now. SubhanAllah. They're praying and fasting, but they believe that Allah Ta'ala has a father, a mother, and a big sister, and you're excited about that? They are deceiving themselves. Praying does not, praying is the second pillar. Without the first pillar of Islam, the praying is not that. The shahada. La ilaha illallah, or Muhammad Rasulullah. Nah. And so we say, Yaquan, that to just have unity, based upon this superficial unity, just to have numbers, is... Not sufficient, as Allah says in chapter 59, 14, and their enmity amongst themselves is very great, and you would think they are united, but their hearts are divided. That's because they are people who know not. So we don't want to have unity with the nation of Islam, but rather we want for them to accept Islam. Now, and we want that for their own benefit first, and we'd like to give them da'wah so we can receive the benefit of giving them da'wah. And if you want more information on this, then Sheikh um, Lu Haydan was asked about them, and it has been translated by my brother Enwar Wright. And he mentions in a nutshell that they are not apostates. Why are they apostates? Never into Islam at all.
<laughs> and he said, and no one can have any doubt about this. They are kufar, they are asiyan. They are disbelievers from the very origin, and they never enter into, into Islam at all. And like I said, if you need if, to read this, it's been translated by my brother Anwar Wright, then you can read this, inshallah ta'ala. And we'll stop right here. And everything I said about them, it applies to the Anzal Cope, the black Hebrew Israelites, the five percenters, they're all the same, Yaquan. All from the same source. Alhamdulillah. Wa salatu wa salam ala nabiya Muhammad ala 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 you should talk to him and see what does he believe because as um just as that the father right about the christmas picture house yeah, Shabbat Shalom. He said about the Christian that takes Shahada, that the Christian should bear witness that there's nothing worthy worth except for Allah, and that Muhammad is the messenger of Allah, and that Isa is the slave of Allah. Right? This is freeing himself from that belief. So you should talk to him and make sure that he understands what we believe, because it's not only that he believes what we believe, but he has to disbelieve everything the nation is supposed to believe. So him saying that Tasha Hill would be sufficient. Just want to check and make sure that he knows what he's saying. Because they say it all the time, but do they know what they're saying? You know, just pull him to the side in private and just make sure that he knows what does the shahada mean. Because in general, if a person, as Sheikh Bozan says, a person who wants to be a Muslim, who knows the meaning of it, and he makes the salat, and he enters into Islam because, by, by saying the, um, the shahada in the salat. But the person has to know what it means. And the fear is that the nation doesn't know what it means. You know, because they've been taught this falsehood, you know, so long. So just make sure that he knows the shahada. It means that you disbelieve in everything that opposes the shahada. They just went along with it. They just went along with it.